Good day to everyone. Today we have the third episode of the Uncensored Pitch Deck Review, uh, the initiative that uh, helps startup entrepreneurs to have independent view and feedback on their project and their pitch deck from professional venture investors. And we have an amazing guest and partner today, Josu from Stratified Capital, the VC firm that invests across various Web3 and crypto vertical with great reputation and great track record in this industry. Hi, Jo. Hi, how are you? How are you? You participate quite often in our pitching sessions, and we receive such a sweet feedback from founders uh, who are grateful for your feedback and very, very straightforward uh, uh, questions about their projects and comments. So I think it's a big, big, big uh, thing that you joined us today and agreed to participate in the Pitch Deck Review. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> today we have a project um, with whom we did not talk directly. So they applied the uh, in Mind platform, uh, requested a Pitch Deck Review. Uh, and uh, the name of the project is uh, Fitly Health. And a reminder to all founders who want their Pitch Deck to be reviewed in the next episodes, you can uh, register your startup profile on in mind. And uh, in the startup profile, you will find uh, the button request pitch deck review. You just need to click this button and we will receive the notification and choose your project for the next episodes. So Fitly House, this is the first slide. Fitly House, get fit, get paid. I think um, for the first slide is pretty good because the information is simple and the image is big to get the impression. So yeah, I think no comment on this. <laughs> to be honest, I'm already getting curious because get fit, get paid. All my life, I'm struggling with uh, weight gain, weight loss problems. And if they, they build the project that can help me in this way, well, I'm already curious. Team on the second slide already. Maybe because I see lots of words about their past experiences, I would recommend them to use the list rather than, or, or, you know, just pick up some relevant information to, to, to the project itself. Like you could say it is like team of veterans from a related industry in the past or different things. And I think for a logo is good because logo is a simple way that people can quickly capture what you want to showcase to be able to trust, but there might be a little bit too much words in this page that, you know, for me personally, you know, I just skip it. <laughs> And uh, I want to ask you, you see here Stanford University, at least uh, from two guys, yeah, Brandon and Hong Gluck Lee, uh, and, uh, I, and also Wharton School, which is quite popular and well-known. And I heard that many VC investors get excited when they see the team coming out of MIT, Stanford, Wharton, and other top business schools or universities. Do you feel excited when you see these logos? Or Absolutely, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Like Stanford, MIT, Wharton, or like I see a Google, or is that Google X would be good, <laughs> you know? I think yeah, they're pretty impressive on on the logo, and when we and we have some like good connections in our minds when we think this, we consider this kind of school or big brands. Okay, then it's great job, guys. Oh. This is a heartbreaking story. Founder nearly lost his dad due to the number one killer in the world and the biggest problem in healthcare, lack of nutritional awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, this is a good punchline to capture the audience, their, their attentions. Mission. Yeah, it's good. It's good to bring the mission up front. I personally love this kind of presentations and I think, yeah, <laughs> great. Mm. I think maybe you could you know trim the sentence and the title a little bit more, like you know with the seventy percent is is you know is impressive. Make it big and make the message like more obvious because from from this page, oh, I these food and then <laughs> I miss the words, you know. So maybe like several words only, and to, together with with the food to to let the people know what you really want to tell. In this slide, either because of the font or because of the length of the sentence, you uh, feel a bit lost of what they really want to deliver. Yeah. However, this Harvard quote in the bottom: health conditions, uh, type two di diabetes, and uh, other diseases impacted by diet influenced changes to the microbiome. The quote in the bottom, maybe to put it up. 
because I see a hover and then I think, okay, I want to read it about it, what, what hover really said about. And maybe for accountants on, on the sentence above, I could only see a word like 70% of all chronic conditions. I think, yeah, you could only leave you know, several words, but make the 70% like a little bigger so that people need to spend about only 10 seconds to know what you really want to say in this page. Indeed. And here is the problem description. Generic di diets don't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get a bit shorter, like fail to, you know, fail to design for unique biology or fail to pick, predict like individuals' responses. Like I like the words, you know, <laughs> big, simple. And I think to point out the problems and then talk about solutions, this kind of arrangement is good. So I'm personally have no, no doubts on this part. So it's all about the UI, UI you know, <laughs> how you read, read this page. But overall, I think it's good enough. Yeah, I would just also recommend, Tim, it's a great slider. Just play with, uh, with fonts and sizes uh, to bring attention to what you want to say, the core of things. Aren't designed, fail to predict, restrictive, maybe make this bolder and bigger, something like that. Uh, because usually here, of course, we spend much more time on the deck but when the investor scrolls the deck, it's literally a um, few seconds maximum per slide. Healthcare is costly for employers. Yeah, I think this page is good. <laughs> it's kind of my style. <laughs> you know, easy to read. I could capture it. Like, you know, costly is a keyword in the middle. I love this one. <laughs> Each employer health data is worth 1500 to 1500 per year. Mm -hmm. Marketplace pays members to get healthy from the value of their own data. Okay, here I start understanding what they're doing. They have a marketplace that pays members to get healthy from the value of their data. You're, you're correct. You know, this key match, like this page, uh, the key message on this page is the one that you just mentioned, but they use their words, they are more tiny, right? <laughs> Maybe they could just like say that, you know, member can monetize their own data and those data are worth like 1500 to 5K per year. Maybe this kind of, you know, a trim a little bit and make the key message upfront. I think for, I think from their wordings, they got a trend that they like to have the result uh, in the bottom of the slide but those conclusion is long, but maybe they could try to make the conclusion upfront on every slide and make the words bigger and trim the content a little bit to that, you know, on each slide, the audience know what is the key message. And those key message is linked from page to page. So when we read all, like read all the slides, we know that you are logic and we understand what you're saying is pretty easy to remember. So in the secondary meeting, meetings, it's, it could, you know, we could get into our last memory fast. So I think this is all like the short pitches purpose. That makes a lot of sense. I fully agree. Finally, we have a solution slide. Fitly Health, the Web3 precision nutrition platform. Okay, for me, it's still not clear uh, how it will look like at the end, but it seems they cover a lot of aspects. It's not just a di diet plan. It's not just nutrition recommendations, but also a lot of other stuff and integrations. I can get the point that there are five solutions there or five different services on their platform. And, and I think um, you could use a way that, you know, I don't know, it's hard for me to tell. I think uh, this is about... The design of this page how do they become more vivid like you know <laughs> like maybe they could take like the sub subtitles out like microbiome analyst oh i got a point i think she said i think their subtitle is even more important than the the names of different services like when i look at the smart plate i don't know what the smart plate means but then you say, if they say that it's a per they only mention about personalized nutrition and coaching, I know what they are going to do. So this, this page is all about solutions and it's all about what kind of services they could provide. Maybe they could just list, you know, just leave the services itself instead of the, the name. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because the most important thing is uh, subtitles that clarify for us what you mean by all these uh titles and pictures. Indeed. So 
play around with designer and uh, just restructure it. B2B fee for outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they are not going to elaborate about the service they are going to do and that put the feed the or the revenue up from. Is it their strategy or because you know there is no strong connection between the previous page and this page, you know. From the previous page, I'm expecting that they are elaborating more about what their services are under different categories. But it seems like they want to make people impressed about how they can make the money. But for me, it's like it doesn't make sense to 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 talk about money upfront because when people know about your product, and if your product is good, and then they are they will more get more interested in the platform. And when they talk about the revenue, this upfront, like audience may not be you know may not be confident in what you say. Like you said that yeah, your gross margin is sixty four percent. Well, that's impressive, but you know we don't know your product yet so this 64 percent makes sense or not there's a big question mark right so i would say if i'm you know in my mind i say you could first talk about what services you do and then we have the clear picture now and then to talk about the margin then you know those margin could be more convincing because we have some like fundamental support from the under like basic understanding of what you're doing that makes this this gross margins, the figure, more even more impressive. I also felt confused uh, opening this slider uh, because I expected, as you said, uh, more elaboration on the services and value proposition. Plus also for me, it's a bit, uh, oh, B2B, because I expect that uh, uh, you are targeting health problems and who is caring most of all about health? The person him or herself, right? And uh, not an employer. Okay, let's see if we understand it further. The only Web3, so right now here is the competition slider. Mm, okay. I was like recommend that to put this page after the elaboration of the services, because at this moment of time, I don't even know what you're doing in detail, right? So this kind of comparison make me you know, overwhelming because there are different titles, different terms and different services that if I am not familiar with nutrition kind of industry, I will get lost and just, you know, I just give up <laughs> and let it pass and without taking any information into my mind. So I will recommend that to, to, to make this comparison after the elaboration of their services. Yeah, great advice because right now everything is mixed in my mind as well. The storytelling is uh, kind of breaking. So competitive advantage, they continue explaining us why they are better from competitors. Yeah, I think if, if they talk this slide after the comp competition analysis is good, I think I'm good with this, this page. If they have their products, their UI, UX, even though this kind of, you know, do not open to a public yet, maybe they could show their UI, UX here and to, to you know, showcase what was the response AI would be. Mm -hmm. I think it will be more like like more concrete. Continue competitive advantage, yeah. World's most precise food tracker. Yeah, I think this 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 slide is good. <laughs> the words is fast and clear. But this part makes me surprised. Uh, I mean, the left AI powered food recognition because, uh, as I said already, I struggle with uh, weight loss and weight gaining all my life, and uh, I used uh, from time to time different diets and different apps uh, to track calories. And Nana app can not even recognize the food, uh, but even uh, the QR code uh, or other codes uh, in the food uh, that you scan are mostly not recognized because they are from different countries. And even here, being a human, not an AI, I recognize kiwi and avocado, but what is this stuff on the right? I have no clue. And I'm wondering how AI can do it. Exactly. But you know, at this, you know, it's more like a punchline. So that's why, you know, if they talk more about the product itself, maybe they could level more about AI power before this page. So this kind of simple kind of like plus lines and have some like easy to read. Uh, to 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 really understand what they are going to do. To answer, yeah, like, to follow up your point, your your point is that yeah, I think um, the AI is cool, and the overall this page is like it's good. <laughs> I would say. I think here they integrate. It's a video. So all you have to do is place your food on the plate, take one picture from the top, 
And in less than three seconds, Smart Plate will tell me exactly what's on the plate and it weighs each food. As you can see, I have whole grain bread, breaded chicken cutlets, and broccoli, and it knows what section every food item is in and how much it weighs. It even tells me the details of each item and watch what happens. When I add it to journal, it'll tell me if I'm about to go over on my carbohydrates, for example, based on my program. So I'll hit change serving, check this out. It knows where the problem is in real time. It'll tell me to remove carbohydrates until I hit my goal. This is Smart Plate, oh. the world's smartest food tracker. Oh my God, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think, well, it's better if you say, because I think it's completely uh, cool. <laughs> Guys, you sold it to me. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I think, um, I think, yeah, they should bring this out, you know, like beforehand, because this could really capture the tensions so that made me want to read and listen to what they're going to do. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, impressive. <laughs> yeah, but they sold me as a user. So I'm ready to buy their app, but not as an investor yet. So that's why we, they have to make the margin in, in the letter like sections, because you have to convince the investor to, to want to become part of their users, and then they can make money from this more than the typical users, investors like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we have... Uh... Again, value proposition, so competitive advantages, right? Yeah, this is good, but you point out a good thing is that maybe you, if no, we are still under the com competitions. So maybe they could use some like, like this is 2.2 .2 or this slide, like, like, so make me feel structured that where am I in this whole 30 page right now? Your personal nutritionist. This is good that provide, you know, like, like further proof that their product is good. But like you said, that you know, I might be a little bit lost. Like this is like another new section, or so we are still under the competition part. Actually, I I may be wrong, but I feel like it's already enough proof that the product is good. Now I would like to learn more about business. I think the overall thirty percent, uh, like thirty thirty slide, is a little bit more overwhelming. So this is could be more like appendix if they need like additional proof. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, smart plate soft launch traction. So this is traction slider. De-risked manufacturing have 2K units in inventory and are growing in our third production. Hmm. Mm. Ah, it seems, Joe, I understood it only now. It seems like smart plate is uh, the device plus software. So it's not the random plate that should be scanned uh, by app. You have to buy app and you have to buy the plate itself. So yeah, that's the one question that I would raise for after I saw the videos, because I say, wow, well, it's really hard for AI to capture information only based on the optical, I mean, the camera. So it must be have some like connection between the plate itself and the smartphone to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I think that should they should mention about this <laughs> yeah this how to capture yeah, thanks for your like your your guess i think you're a pretty good guesser <laughs> but i'm not you know okay and speaking about traction numbers so 1.2 million run rate generated 500k in net revenue so it seems they already sold quite a lot of devices right consumer SaaS model consumer SaaS model so uh i remember there was a slide about b2b monetization and here here we speak about consumer SaaS. Mm -hmm. okay maybe for like the arrangement of this slide is good and like you say it's like i get no strong connection between the different services and what kind of services they have because we haven't do so before <laughs> i mean during during this like from page one to page 17 i'm lost about like what they really could provide <laughs> in more detail so yeah but to to point out this kind of 1.2 million 4k plus 444 percent growth rate i think this is impressive but and have no like it's good to keep this page but like like the priority i mean the sequence of different page to have some like clear clear link between each slides is what they make so far again competitive advantage come on <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, um, I mean, 
Uh, usually, or, originally, I think that we are, you know, start talking about the product itself already, but same stuff. <laughs> Here they tell us why Web3 and blockchain, something like that. They, they need some function like that. They utilize the blockchain technology without users need to understand what Web3 really is. <laughs> Like maybe they need some like good punchline. And I think the words is overwhelming in this page because the photo they are using is is still the words. And I might get a little bit tired when you know reading through all these words <laughs> in this page. But I think this doesn't make some big issue. But the only like major issue is I cannot capture the structure of their presentation at this moment of time. So if they get a good structure. This kind of wordings, the, the amount of words, I think is it's okay to read, because if I only read some like the point, the bullet points, it's still easy for me to capture what they really want. Yeah, the sequence is broken for sure and messed up, so it should be restructured. Uh, and uh, also, maybe the title of this slide is not very relevant. I, I would uh, title it something like "Why Web 3.0 because actually they here explain uh, why they need uh, Web3 and what values it adds uh, to the app. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Total addressable diabetes market is 1.2 trillion and health data is 1.5 trillion market. Yeah, the market is huge. And here is the market slide, but it's slide with words and not with uh, graphs as we are used to. Correct. This is this kind of macro discussion that could put it up front. Like maybe together with you know the society talk about like how valuable the data would be like 50, 1500 to five k. Maybe they could combine this kind of macro analysis in different bullet points and pick up some like really 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 important kind of bullet points. And for this kind of content, it's more like appendix, I would say. <laughs> True. Also, they repeat here uh, the value of health data. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we already saw this. Why repeating? And mm -hmm. another thing, I'm still getting lost, to be honest, maybe because mm -hmm. my brains are slow, but they talk about B2B uh, monetization and health data monetization. At the same mm -hmm. time, they sell directly uh, devices and they sell these smart plates, etc. So what is the core business model? Because it's, if everything yeah. is mixed, it's very different business model to sell to people who want to lose weight, sorry, uh, to sell to mm -hmm. companies who want employees' data. Yeah, correct. It's all about structure. Like, let's just say about the business model offer and also the vision. So again, they continue the market opportunity slider. Some, some, some. But this kind of like one point two trillion or like two hundred sixty two billions, yeah, it could pick up some like really important things. You put it one page upfront as a macro kind of analysis. And then talk about their their big picture about what their their business model is and what their vision is. And then talk more about and then talk about products, elaborate more about products and then the competition part and then how they make money, their go to market strategy and their valuation. I think this kind of arrangement will be more easy to follow. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you feel about this? We just need 40,000 users to build a hundred million uh, per year business, potential for hundred X plus ROI. Do you get super excited? To be true, I will have a big question mark, but I would like to know why. <laughs> <laughs> but it really captured my attentions. Again, they put it you know, at the bottom of this page, but you know, so for me, it's like, all my attention has been to some irrelevance, like non-critical information up there. But I lost this one, to be true. <laughs> So maybe this part is better to put in circles as usually, yeah, as typical circles, big circle, Tom, and then it is yeah. Tom, and then it is Som. Yeah, yeah, I think what you're suggesting is even better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go to market strategy. Here we go. Okay. So they offer smart place to smaller employers for their existing wellness programs via API. Then uh, they upsell metabolic health program for employees uh, who need to lose weight. The go-to-market is going not directly B2C, but B2B2C, right? First selling to employers and then from employers upselling to employees. Uh, well, mm -hmm. for me, it's unexpected, to be honest. Uh, 
unexpected why such a cool app should go into such a narrowing and complicated structure or maybe i'm missing something here yeah i think the the reason why you're like because i get the same feeling as well because you know like you say if they didn't mention that what their core business model is up front i would say it's really hard to see because maybe they sh- they just talk about like this is a b2b2c model and take all the sentence uh, as a notes and then only keep get the graph right and they have to showcase why this is the B2B2C models. So my understanding after reading all these content is that they are using kind of like different different tier to capture all these users, like, like a net, right? Mm-hmm. I got their points, but they could use some like, you know, graph to, to make it like, make this kind of image even more concrete. And I think it's typical for this kind of like, you know, healthy or supplements kind of products to use this kind of tier to get their like, like more and more users into their user base is understandable. But yeah, it's too many words that are really trying to read. For me. And when founders will watch this video, uh, don't forget when you put something important in this small, tiny font uh, in the bottom, be sure that maybe nine out of 10 investors will just miss this information. Okay, initial target. Again, okay. again they talk about market right here. Ma- mm. Our go to market strategy. So, yeah, this arrangement is good, you know, to talk about target after realizing like, their business model. Yeah, it's good. The only things, again, is about like too many words. Mm-hmm. They try to make sure that, you know, what they are going to say shows on the slides but it doesn't mean the presentation needs to do that the presentation is to you know talk listen to what they talk but only leave some key image on on the slides this is more like the white paper not a deck <laughs> and they also repeat here again 107 million in the us alone we just need 40 000. we already saw this message we do not need repeating it there are two slides they talk about targets Yep. So it was initial target and here is oh, okay. future targets. Okay, I see a point. <laughs> and then they will go into narrow, yeah, a targeting uh, particular diseases, pre-diabetes, diabetes, metabolic syndrome. Mm-mm. This kind of qualitative way to 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 say about targets also needs some like quantitative proof, like you know. They said, so they are talking about the, the 368 billions is what they are going to achieve. Yep. Here it was 78 billion and here is a 368 billion. So it's the plan to go from uh, some to some. Mm-hmm. That's the point. If they want to do this kind of arrangement, maybe they have to, you know, have some like highlight or bolt on on. Like like seventy eight billions in the previous page, so I see there's a clear, clear like link. So what they're going to do in the previous page and what's the purpose in this page? They are saying about their potential growth. I would say, but there's no clear link between these two slides. <laughs> now we talk about fundraising. One point one million two hundred fifty precede equity plus tokens. Mm-hmm. And again, again, third time <laughs> we see we just need forty thousand yeah. users. Come on, boys! <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is pretty important to them. And maybe they they could use like simple like like calculations or diff- like simple kind of formulas thing to prove this and like to to elaborate this sentence perfectly as appendix or. Or in the previous page to you know, like you know, explain it once and then leave it there because people know that okay, you are doing some analysis and I truly believe that okay, you make sense. And then we, I have this kind of key message in my mind. But like you said, is they repeat this kind of information too many times. And uh, how do you feel about this yellow bold uh, uh, sentence? The latest crypto and blockchain recorded median revenue multiply for 2021 was 7.6x. I, I just don't get why they put it here. Yeah, I think it's not that relevant because, you know, like the industry doesn't showcase like what you really do because they, their potential is 100x, right? 100x. 
not the 6.6, 7.6x. So it's kind of relevant, you know, when, like the audience, those VCs, they know about the industry fact. So there's no need that they had to spend some more words to educate them, only to prove that what you really got. Okay, here are financial projections until 2026. I think um, this could be a good appendix, and I think it could be a strong appendix for me personally. It's really hard for um, for the Web3 project to this to have the financial projections. The purpose when we are like asking for the projection is not about the accurate projections, but the way that they showcase that the projects could do the analysis itself and care about their future plans to provide some like strong evidence that they are not only earning a quick money. So for our early stage VC kind of viewpoints, this kind of financial project is good, but it's more like appendix. Fully agree. And great job, guys, that you have it, because very rarely I see in Web3 projects financial projection slider. Yeah, great. <laughs> exactly. But this kind of slide is a good proof for their valuation if they talk about their valuations. By the way, maybe they could link to what they think their valuation is justified by this financial projections. Yeah, but here we do not see anything about valuation. We just see 1.2 uh, million, but yeah. not- This is the fund they are going to raise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, vision. Well, I don't know how you feel, but I think it's too overwhelming right now. Exactly, <laughs> too many words. <laughs> because they talk about their mission before, and then they talk about their vision. Mm -hmm. Maybe they could combine this, right? <laughs> And said it once only. Maybe they wanted to give a hook for crypto investors because here, first time in these 30 slides, we see Fitly Health DeFi and insurance <laughs> products. You see, we have DeFi here as well. Okay, yeah. They bury they bury this this kind of key information, important information. Like, yeah, I can really find it. <laughs> the word is too much, too many to read. Okay, I think that's aha uh -huh. that's the last slider so we have 27 slides in the core presentation and uh, two more slides in the appendix or three more slides in the appendix they should put this up front you know <laughs> you know this part of like their service elaborations i think um yeah this is they should put this like at the very beginning or you know but the words is still too many to read uh I'm going to say I would recommend that you know to cut down the 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 total slides to about like fifteen to sixteen slides mm -hmm. maximum, mm -hmm. and and anything beyond these slides could be appendix and to have more structure. Like first we talk about vision missions, and then you know oh you could you, they could even skip about like you know uh industry outlook or they could only spend one page about industry outlook. Like, uh, this is a really prospective industry. And then we talk about the vision and mission they want to handle in this industry. And then to this out their solutions to, to tackle the real problems and have some clear structure about what the services is and their model is, their business model is. And then do the comparison and do a comparison, then talk about go to market strategy and justify and to, and to showcase their financial results. You know, and their tokenomics and or their valuations. Since in this in this kind of like arrangements, it will be like more like listener friendly. I would say. Yeah, I think overall, I think uh, what they are going to do is great, and is tackling some like real problems. So by nature, this kind of product is is good enough. So how do they tell the story is important. <laughs> this is like the final comments I have. And here we have some last slides, uh, like. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. NFTs with uh -huh. aha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fidgetal, Fidgetal NFT, redeem for Smart Plate Pro. Ah, okay. They should, yeah, and this, there's important things about their products, right? If they don't talk about this, we don't know about anything about this point. <laughs> exactly. Guys, uh, you have put in the presentation vision, mission, <laughs> and some unnecessary slides, uh, but you missed. <laughs> And put in the appendix the most important slides uh, explaining uh, the products, uh, NFTs, and everything. How? how yeah, it... This is the first time. This is the first time I saw the product itself, right? In full. There's an app, there's a plate, and there's a weight. 
I think this is the first time I, I, I have the full picture about what they're going to do. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And the third is, is uh, coaching up to five smartly. Ah, and this is the offer, I think, for B2B, for companies. Yeah, this is more like Pandas, I agree. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So I stop the share. And uh, my question here, Jock, I know we spent a lot of time on this deck and it was <laughs> very, very intense deck. Um, overall, uh, as an investor, mm -hmm. uh, do you what? How do you feel? Uh, would uh, you like to follow up with the team after reading this deck, or this deck did not sell you the project itself as to an investor? I did not capture any key value. So, as an investor, if we only have one chance to decide whether we have follow up question or not, I would say no. <laughs> to be true, because um in my mind is that i don't get you but you know when you cannot say your story pretty clear to me that means that you might get some chance that you are not thinking clear enough and if you think clear enough maybe you cannot make your money and fulfill what you really want to do so yeah i think uh, i recommend that to have something like restructure their their way to showcase their products uh, that's a very good advice, Joe. And uh, another question I have uh, that a lot of founders have in their heads. Uh, why in general investors, they do not give uh, the feedback if uh, they don't like uh, the deck or if uh -huh. they have extra questions. A lot of investors, they just skip the project or put it on hold and not coming back to startup founders with the feedback. There are two, two kinds of things. First, if they, we directly say no, in this round, that means that we are we don't like your project for sure. But the hold means that we agree with like what you're doing and think what you're doing, this segment or this this business is prospective somewhere in the market. But from your products, we cannot see the differentiate point that you can bring other competitors. So that's why we say just hold and listen to another project to do some our own internal competitions. And then if we think, yeah, you're interesting, and we will remember that, you know, and you know, dig the telegram to figure out like what projects, what's the name in in a the telegram, then you know, we have some reconnections. So yeah, the reason why we hold is that we think what you're doing might be prospected, but your product is not good enough at this moment of time. Gotcha. Or the way you you talk about the story is not that interesting enough. Mm -hmm. And if you do yeah. not give this feedback, uh, if you don't say no and do not give the feedback, does it make sense to come back to you again for founders with the updated deck, updated information uh, to get one more chance to reconsider your opinion? I think every partner should do that because you know it's tired for us to remember what what we are following up. But if you take initiative in doing this, you got more chances than. Oh yeah, I remember you. Like, let's see what your progress is. Maybe there's more potentials. So yeah, just keep doing this for sure. That's amazing. And I want to say thank you so much, Joe, and uh, the you. startup team that we just reviewed. Uh, they should be really mm -hmm. happy. Fitly Health, you are lucky that Joe agreed uh, mm -hmm. to review your pitch deck. I think he gave priceless advice. And if you digest all this properly, without arrogance, just put it in your mind and restructure the deck. Uh, consider all the comments you will have uh, the bright deck the beautiful <laughs> pitch the beautiful story the product itself when it's ready send it to me i'm ready to buy the product now you need yeah. to, get, <laughs> to get prepared to, to sell the project itself and also, exactly okay. and also okay. the tokens yeah because uh, uh we did not learn anything about tokens to be honest from this pitch yeah is it safe or is it safe is a question mark yeah <laughs> true joe thank you so much for your wisdom you are amazing as usual thank you thank you thank you good luck bye 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 <laughs>